The new assault weapons ban proposed by Dianne Feinstein is actually signed into law by the President of the United States. I believe we have a good chance of beating it in the Supreme Court, and here's why. In 1934, Congress passed the National Firearms Act. The National Firearms Act, or the NFA, required you to register certain types of firearms with the federal government. Along with that, you had to pay a $200 tax. And $200 in 1934 was a sizable amount of money. I mean, it was a lot of money, certainly far more than the cost of any firearm you could purchase back then. In 1938, a gentleman by the name of Jack Miller and one of his associates was arrested for transporting a short-barreled shotgun across state lines. This was in violation of the NFA Act because Mr. Miller had not paid his $200 tax on a short-barreled shotgun. Mr. Miller went to court and fought it, and one of the lower courts actually upheld Mr. Miller's argument that the Second Amendment protected his right to own that shotgun and that the NFA Act was in fact a violation of his Second Amendment rights. As you can imagine, the federal government wasn't happy with the ruling of the lower courts, so they appealed it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court agreed to hear the case, but unfortunately Mr. Miller and his attorneys didn't make their arguments before the Supreme Court. They elected not to. So the Supreme Court only heard the government's side of the argument. For that reason, they offered a very narrow ruling on the case. They didn't offer a thorough examination of the Second Amendment. However, they did make a couple of important comments in their ruling. The Supreme Court ruled that the shotgun that Mr. Miller had in his possession was illegal because it wasn't commonly used by the militia or the military of the time. What they in essence said was that the Second Amendment protects our right to own firearms commonly used by militias or militaries of the time. And because that short barrel shotgun wasn't commonly used by the U.S. military, it wasn't protected under the Second Amendment. So think about this for a second. The AR-15s that they're seeking to ban through the assault weapons ban, they are commonly used firearms by the military, by our U.S. military, right now. So under the Miller decision, banning the AR-15 would in fact be a violation of our Second Amendment rights. The anti-gunners might argue that the Miller decision protected the rights of the state to own firearms and not the individual. However, in the Supreme Court ruling, they actually wrote in their opinion that they recognized that the militia was comprised of able-bodied men who supplied their own firearms, the individual. So it opened that door and it shut the door on the collective right argument. So let's talk about the magazine bans that are being proposed. If the Miller decision guarantees our right to own military-styled firearms in common use of the time, well, the military also uses 30-round magazines, so by proxy, they're also protected under the Miller ruling and the Second Amendment. When you throw into the mix the Heller decision, which definitely tells us that we have an individual right to own firearms, the anti-gunners don't have a leg to stand on, and the assault weapons ban would be ruled unconstitutional if the Supreme Court was doing their jobs. So now you know the truth. We have the Supreme Court on our side. They have told us that we have an individual right to own military-styled firearms that are in common use by the military of the day. That includes the AR-15, the AK, Uzis, or any other military-styled firearm you can think of. So Dianne Feinstein is wrong. Pierce Morgan is wrong. That doesn't stop them, though, from pushing these bills through the House and the Senate and being signed by the President of the United States. So we have to act now to stop these bills. I know you guys are tired of hearing me say this, but please follow the link in the description below. Put your name in, your zip code in. It will find your congressmen and senators for you. Type in your message, hit submit, and everything's done. And do that every week if you can, or more frequently. We need to make our voices heard. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.